I think that for a long time, microfinance was really dominated by growth of big partners and big organizations in Latin America and Asia. And in Africa over the last, let's say, 10 years, uh, there really hadn't been that many institutions that had emerged and had reached the kind of scale and impact and even profitability that we had seen in other places of the world. I think right now Africa is really emerging and there's some very interesting things going on in different parts of the continent, both in East Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, um, that are applying not only best practices, but are actually even pushing the industry further as it figures out how to reach some of the poorest people in the poorest continent of the world. So I think there are still a lot of different varieties of microfinance institutions in Africa. Everything from full-service commercial banks to small NGO-based or community-based organizations. And the process of deciding what kinds of products, what kinds of structures, and what kinds of methodology are successful is really just emerging. And there are some very interesting players who are coming to the forefront and seem to be having a big impact in the economy and in the sectors where they work. There are a great many challenges to implementing um, scalable, sustainable microfinance in Africa. Part of it is structural because populations tend to be more dispersed and more rural than in other parts of the world. Um, getting to scale is more difficult on the transaction costs of getting to scale. It's hard to believe, but salary levels can be higher in Africa. And the reason being is the size of the educated population can be lower and they demand higher level salaries. So, um, and then most microfinance organizations, especially as they grow, have to provide so much of their own infrastructure for electricity with generators um, because there's not the kind of infrastructure backbone that they can take advantage of in other places. So that's really challenging from a structural point of view. Um, it's also challenging because of Africa being so poor that there are a lot of shocks that happen. There's drought, there's disease, there are other kinds of problems that create shocks to the individuals, to the borrowers, to the savers, um, and those also create hurdles for the microfinance institutions themselves. Um, I think historically what we saw were microfinance institutions that they themselves rose and fell with those good times and bad times. And what we're seeing now, I think, are innovations where they're actually not just weathering the storms better, but they're actually developing products and services that low-income people can use to manage their lives better. And in that way, have taken a real innovative approach at not just the individual level, but the community level of trying to be successful in the African context. I worked in Africa for about 11 years, and I think some of the advantages of Africa is the great human potential that exists. I mean, I have to say that working in different parts of the world, I may be biased now, but my staff in Africa were really committed and they really understood that they were there trying to make a difference in their community, in their country, and in Africa in general. So I think one of the things that's a real advantage is the human capital factor that exists in Africa. I think the other thing is that because the economy is a growing economy in most of the countries, there's real room to have a positive impact. And I think the other natural advantage is that the regulatory environment in many countries is trying to work with the microfinance sector to create a safe and secure environment for borrowers and savers, but also to allow for innovation to take place. The other nice thing I found in my work in Africa is that you could get people from different sectors of society and even different kinds of commercial enterprises to come together to help solve problems. So at one point we were trying to work with small businesses and we were able to get a cell phone company together, an agri-dealer together, and we were able to pull them all together to try and solve a business problem that helped both the community and helped the microfinance institution. We really began uh, about seven years ago and the goal was really to provide a way to transform people's lives and help them manage their lives better through providing a wide variety of financial services. We were a fully licensed or our fully licensed commercial bank. 
So the strategy was not just to provide a loan or to provide a savings account, but we really started from the perspective of how do poor people live their lives and where can we partner with them to help either lower the transaction costs or to help them manage the riskiness of their lives. So if they needed money for a wedding or if they needed money for a business investment or if they needed a safe and secure place to save, that was really our goal was to work with them that way. The bank has grown quickly in the Malawi context. Um, I think we ended this last year with um, just under 200,000 savers and about 35,000 borrowers. And we operate throughout the country right now. And it continues to grow. Uh, I think that we really spent a lot of time in the early years trying to build the relationship with the customer and trying to build the products and services that reacted to those needs of the customers. So we really see ourselves when we come to a new part of the country as a, wanting to be a valued member of that community and wanting to have a positive impact on that community. And so we began to offer things that were unique. So one problem in Malawi was no one had a national ID and a large percentage of our customers were illiterate. So we were able to introduce a smart card product that was biometric based. So customers then could transact on their accounts or transact on the ATMs or transfer money using their fingerprints rather than having to be able to read and write. That both had a security aspect to it and an inclusion aspect to it, but it also made people feel more comfortable to come into the branch because they didn't have to worry whether they would have to fill out large amounts of paperwork. They really could just transact like everyone else and it took away a stigma that banks were only for educated people or sophisticated people. And if you went into a banking hall, you would see uh, people packed into it and there would be kids on the floor, sometimes chickens. It really became a market in and of itself and it became a real part of the community where we had a branch. Um, the other things that really were interesting is that as we began to learn more about how poor people were living their lives, we were able to work with others to introduce new services or new products that were valued by our customers. There had been for years in Malawi uh, agricultural lending for crops and for other kinds of inputs that had not gone so successfully. And working with some partners, uh, we were able to introduce a rainfall insurance against the crops. And we were also able to work with agri-dealers and with agronomists. And in doing that, we could form farmers into groups and were able to offer them a product that they really felt managed their risk better. At the same time, we focused on how much money the customer would have in their pocket at the end of the day so that the bank would benefit, the dealer would benefit, and the farmer would benefit. And that product grew significantly over the years. And the amazing thing was you would see a real difference in the lives of the people. You could see people that were able to build a house or you would see people sending their kids to school who weren't going to school before or moving from a grass roof to a tin roof. And those are the kinds of things that by being kind of listening to customers really made a difference in the bank's growth. Currently the bank, um, Opportunity Bank in Malawi is the largest microfinance bank in that market and one of the fastest growing banks. It currently has over 195,000 savers and over 34,000 borrowers and that's after in going into its seventh year of operation. Um, and in a small, poor country like Malawi, um, we really feel that that's been a success story. Um, but the success really doesn't go to us as much as to the borrowers and the savers who really built the bank, um, one branch at a time.